So this is Linda of Crisis King Forever. I have an, I had an appointment on Monday with a doctor. Today, tomorrow, Friday, two more next week, and um, one on one of those days have two appointments on the same day. So my kid and I are trying to get all of our appointments in while I have PTO and stuff. But anyhow, um, so I I'm late two days. That's why I've not done this for solid seven. I'm on the ninth day not on the 7th, but it's whatever. I want to thread through the story of Moses and the Nile River having blood and Elijah pulling up with the power of God, of course, this axe out of water, iron, and the end times. In the last days, the, the rivers will turn to blood and, and they won't be drinkable. And so... I'm trying to thread through here is we know that the last days the plagues of the book of revelation reflects the first the plagues of moses and um the fact that when you're in the last days if you have the holy spirit or not i'm not sure how that's going to work I, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to know for all we know it could be different levels of judgment and Maybe the people around you will fall away before certain things happen, depending on what level you're on. Okay, so I can't explain it, but I'm pretty sure whatever God has in the palm of his hand, he has full control over. Okay, so I don't really know if we're meant to understand the order of the last days. I don't think we're supposed to. I think it might be a type of sorting out. And, you know, if there's a Holy Spirit inspired people listening, just hear me out. But about the the Red River, and I know this is not going to be a put together video, okay? This is off the cuff. When Moses took that the, the rod of God, put it over, and the river turned red with blood, Elijah was with somebody, and I'll put it on the screen, and the axe head that this guy was using fell into the water, and it was iron. Elijah broke a, a stick or a, it's a, some type of branch and threw it in the water. And he said something like, um, like, cause the ax had actually floated, it actually floated up and Elijah said, grab it yourself. That's what he said. So he told the guy, cause the guy was like, you're going to help me get this. And Elijah was like, oh, I'm going to take the stick. I'm going to throw it in the water. It's going to hit the surface of the water and the iron and the ax head will rise up. It did rise. Okay. So iron doesn't float, but it did. Um, I think there's something to this. I don't think that's in vain because Elijah had the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit was a bit rare. In the last days, maybe it won't be. I don't know, 145,000. There's all kinds of, you know, God said before the throne, there'll be countless people of all different tribes, nations, and tongues. That's also in the book of Revelation. So I don't know what order that's all happening in, but what I'm thinking is that might be the reverse, you know, the inverse of what Moses was doing. If you're in the last days, and according to the Bible, um, the Egyptians would dig around the Nile to try to find water, fresh water to drink, but they couldn't find any. It was all kind of just bloody and not drinkable. If you're in the last days, it sounds like you would take, I don't know if it has to be a special stick or something, but like Elijah, break a stick off and consecrate it to the Lord, throw it in the water, and blood has iron in it, and it would float, and maybe it would sort, and maybe it could drink around the iron, around where the blood kind of, you know, coagulates. What I'm saying is, you know, when God had cursed the Egyptians, he had even made it so that the frogs were in everybody's bed, no matter what station they were in, except for the Israelites, God's people. So that might be kind of its own testimony. If you're in the last days and you are among people and the rivers are bloody and you break a stick off and you throw it in the water and you can grab fresh water yourself because the iron has been sorted and that would be its own type of sifting like 
you would be a living, breathing testimony to the people who see you do that. And you get to proclaim the truth of the God of Israel, who is Yeshua HaMashiach. That is our high priest. That is our, our Moses. And he's also the sacrificial lamb. And you could prove this this all threads through. This is this is the God of Israel, this Jesus. Because I mean, Moses made the waters red with the rod of God. Elijah sorted and fixed, or what would you say? Made iron rise by putting the stick in the water, which I always thought was kind of strange. And in the last days, one of the last plagues is blood in the river and there's iron in blood so this is my opinion i think that if you were to take all the plagues and really study and focus on you know i mean it's not even like logic i think it's the holy spirit and when you're in a very strange position which whatever way god sorts us um and you're in that place where you get to be Somebody go, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do in this situation? And it's a very extreme situation. You've got bloody rivers around you. Um, and, and I think this is symbolic in life, too. Like, you have a lot of big things that happen in life that you could blow up and make a big deal out of. Or you could have a red river and throw a stick in the water and nobody else can drink. But you can because you understand how the God of Israel works. It's not the stick. And it's not you, it's you consecrating it to the God of Israel and that he is the God of Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that Yeshua HaMashiach, you consecrate that stick in Yeshua's name, put it in the water and the iron will rise and you'll get to drink. But I feel like that's not just for Red Rivers. I feel like that's something that's being done in everyday life. And, you know, in the way the Holy Spirit might speak to you, you know, for me, it's like a little sparkly points where I'll be reading the Bible and then the Bible or God, the Holy Spirit will spark, make it sparkle. I don't know how to, to emphasize that except maybe the volume goes up a bit in my head on what's being said. A highlight, kind of like a spiritual highlight occurs. Um, it happened recently when I was listening to a Bible in the year and it spoke of in the book of, I think it was in the book of Genesis, um, how God would come with a shout. But that's also the way, um, oh, a trumpet and a shout. That's in the Old, Old Testament, the first books of Moses. But it's also um, in the book of Joshua. And it's also in the New Testament. So these are all the places where God keeps saying, these all sparkle. And I remember reading um, Elijah and him throwing the, the stick in the water. And I thought, this is out of place. Like, this is so weird. But then I was listening to the Bible in the Year podcast this weekend, and I realized there was a rod in water, and that's how the rivers became bloody, and the iron rising, and I just thought, oh my gosh, you know, like all of a sudden, an edit occurs, you know, like editing in a movie, and I can't say that I would ever be able to experiment on this, living in the last days, and discover this to be true, I have no idea. Um, what I'm saying is depend mostly on the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Um, I do think there's a weird coincidence there. Water, stick, iron, you know, Moses, Elijah, the last days. I don't know. That's what I've been thinking about. This is Linda of Crisis King Forever. May God be with you.